Hi guys, welcome to Teacher Party, um, to Life with Teacher Party. There's something that has been eating, uh, eating me, guys. It's sort of like giving me sleepless nights, uh, which is what happens when someone says, you know what, I, I wanted more, I expected more. L let's assume this is your manager. I wanted more. Is that all? Like in a relationship, like, is that all? You know, when somebody does a surprise party for you and then they sing for you happy birthday and then they say, let's go home and you're thinking, oh my God, is that all? Or the boss, the same boss you're giving the reports and then they say, is that all? Or they say, you know, I expected much more. I expected better and you're thinking oh my god or they say is that enough is that the best you can do you know and and i what's making me not sleep around these questions is because when is more enough when is more expected is more the way of life do we get rest from the more why do people expect so much when we can give only this, only this much. And that brought me to a scripture, uh, Matthew 5, verse 38 says, here's another old saying that deserves a second look. Eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. Is that going to get us anywhere? Here's what I propose. Don't hit back at all. If someone strikes you, stand there and take it. And mind you guys, in other versions, this is just not someone. This is an evil person. If someone drags you into court and sues you for the shirt off your back, give wrap your best, gift wrap your best coat and make a present of it. And if someone takes unfair advantage of you, use the occasion to practice the servant life. No more tit for tat stuff. Live generously. If all you do is love the lovable, that is also Matthew 5, but verses 47. If all you do is to love the lovable, do you expect a bonus? Anybody can do that. If you simply say hello to those who greet you, do you expect a medal? Any run on the mill sinner does that. There's another version now that says, do not resist here. It says, do not resist an evil person. If anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to the other cheek. Turn to them the other cheek also. And if anyone wants to sue you and take your shirt hand over the coat as well, if anyone forces you to go one mile, go with them two miles. Give to them who give to the one who asks, and do not turn away from the one who wants to borrow from you. And if you greet only uh, your own people, what are you doing more than others? Do not even pagans do that. Then Matthew 5, 17 says, do not think I've come to abolish the law or, or the prophets. I have not come to abolish the law, but to fulfill them. For I truly tell you, until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of a pen will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. Therefore, anyone who sets aside one of the least of these command, commands and teaches others accordingly will be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever practices and teaches these commands will be called the great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you that unless your righteousness, mark that one, guys, unless your righteousness surpasses that of, sorry, that's that's my neighbor's child, okay? Doesn't want to sleep. So for, I tell you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. Unless, mark that one, guys, unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. So that's why I gave this message today. Um, 
the God of an extra mile. And I, I say the subtitle is go the extra mile. You will not die, I promise. OK, so the, the title of the message today is the God of an extra mile. So the, the context here is. Is 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 in Christ times when Christ came um, into rulership and presenting the gospel robustly. There were laws that existed before him, the laws of Moses and then the law of Lex Talianus. So this law actually was a retaliation law or it was a revenge law that was approved in the Roman in the Roman law and it was even codified. So we can say this law was part of the legal system. OK, so this law wanted to bring justice to the rich and the poor. So if if someone. Watches your eye out. Then don't kill the person because they didn't take your life. They took your eye. So if somebody broke your arm, then bre break their arm also. So it was just to make the, the revenge and the retaliation and and in it. Uh, on behalf of the person that is grieved uh, to balance and so that no one uh, gets more than what they were uh, offended on. OK, so. But Christ comes to fulfill uh, the law of God, not this law of man, but even this law, it was in the book of Moses. Uh, Christ is saying, OK, guys, we've been going on and on and on how we are ready to break a person's back if they broke your back. Are we going anywhere as a society? So Christ is challenging us to think higher than retaliation. Christ is challenging to think higher than what we can get when someone offends us. I hope you get that. So he's not saying he is not acknowledging the end justice that has been that has been done to the other party uh, that did not plan the harm but he's just saying now that this has been practiced did we get anything good out of this let's be honest did we get anything good out of this or it's just the vicious cycle of revenge because the moment you get the eye from the other person who took your eye first they're gonna gun for the leg and then it just never ends it, it just never brings peace. Yes, it brings the justice, but it doesn't it bring peace, love and community building. So Christ is questioning this that uh, in this in this scripture, Christ is questioning this and saying here is another old saying that deserves a second look. Are we getting somewhere as a society when we practice this law? OK. So then then he says, I propose a new standard. When an evil person attacks you, do not resist. Do not fight back. Do not resist. And Christ is more concerned about there is no problem with you, the offended. There is a very big problem with the offender. And whatever act they are doing, it's exposing them. And remember, God is your father. He is the one who does revenge. So be still and take it in, but do not uh, retaliate. Because remember, before he said you are the salt of the of the world. He said you are the light sitting on the hill. So so good things emanate from you. The moment you get entangled in this vicious circle of fighting back, or the moment you get entangled in this vicious circle of attacking people, your light is going to dim. One way or the other, your light is going to dim because now you've joined another dark circle. Um, you're, you're being salty, bringing flavor on earth. You ain't gonna bring any flavor anyway because now you are just being meddled in dark things okay but in 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 the other context where it says if someone slaps you in the face this is just not impama that you know we say in south africa impama this is not impama that you know uh the slapping in the face suggested if you give the other chick someone is slapping with the back of the hand and that back of the hand 
that other hand was used for wiping your bums. So it's actually an insult. It's actually someone insulting you with a derogatory term. OK, so Christ is saying that being done, I propose you do not retaliate. I propose you do not fight back because it's going to be natural for you in that instance to fight back. I hope we get each other in that instance. It's going to be very natural for you to fight back. But Christ says, I'm not encouraging you to do that because don't forget your prior position. I'd like you to have in God, which is you are the light of the world. You are the city on the hill. Maybe let's read that scripture so that it doesn't seem like uh, I am making up stories. It is in Matthew 5 still. So Matthew 5 is actually a, a, a very big chapter. So earlier on, he says, you are the light of the world. What did I do? You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light, do, no, no, do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men and that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. So now you see the context of who you are, of who you are in Christ first. Before now he introduces this law that, listen, this law is not working because now Whatever he said in the in the first passages, they are nullified by this tit for tat law. Okay, you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? How shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. So Christ has already told you and given you your identity. Oh, shake his hair. So he has already given you your identity earlier on. Your identity is not that of a, of a street fighter. Your identity is not that of a strat mate. Your identity is not that of a para. You know, uh, your identity is that you are light and salt. So now he's saying, let's review this law because it's going to uh, circumvent, no, not actually circumvent, it's going to nullify your 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 given identity in the earlier passages okay so so now it, it continues to say i challenge you that you do not dwell on the lex talianus law but i give you a new law now is don't resist an evil person it's not you is evil it's them that is evil um, if you allow them to do what they want if you allow them to do what they want in the context of them provoking you if in the context of them provoking you it, it, stick to your identity stick your to your identity don't stick to their their identity of violence okay and I just needed that because I went through something hectic Sunday that challenged my identity a lot. So now continuing, then he says, if someone asks you to go and uh, go one mile, make sure you go an extra mile. Ne? And we have to bring context again. This is in the Roman times. And Jesus, when he's preaching this thing, um, he's saying, uh, when, when Jesus Christ is, is preaching this thing in Rome, there was a law that gave soldiers, it, it, it was a law that gave soldiers a, a preferential advantage over people carrying their luggage. You would imagine in those times, in Christ's times, if Christ used a donkey to enter the city, not a Porsche, um, definitely soldiers walked with their luggage. So now a soldier was given by the Roman law. I mean, you see soldiers are always ready to move with their backpacks and everything. So this law gave soldiers that whenever they are going to wherever they are going, they can just call you whoever. They don't have to know who you are. They don't have to know if you're a pastor, you're a lawyer, you are a 
Taylor, you are Ines. They, they didn't have to know you. They just called you passing by and then they said, carry my luggage for a mile. But now the problem is the luggage had to be a certain weight and it was only for one mile, one mile being a thousand steps, okay? Um, but the problem now is who was going to measure the luggage when it's given to you? Because this thing was given randomly to you when you were walking on the streets and you just happened to pass by a Roman soldier. So really, there's no way it's where you're going to say, is this thing within even the cages that I'm supposed to carry? And the Roman soldiers were given so much power by the Roman law. Are you sure they're going to keep you to one mile or they're just going to make you walk 10 miles because they're not finding the next passerby? OK, so it was such an exploitative law on humanity. It was such a, an inconveniencing law. Imagine you are going to bury your loved one. You are going to bury your loved one. You are rushing to the funeral and then you, 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 you meet a Roman soldier that is saying, carry this thing in one mile for me. And this Roman soldier decides what is one mile. OK, one mile can be 10 miles. OK, and now you already drenched, you're sweating. So it was such a very bad and some law on people's daily lives. So I can imagine, yo, I'm not sure if it was me, if I saw that suit, Yama saw Chananza or Balega said, guys, I'll titi green, titi left, titi green, titi right, because Galok, can you imagine? And now this is the interesting thing. In those times, I don't even think there was a scanner up or was would he now fulfill the duties of being a civilian here. Imagine, let's say, upatele omni the luggage and you did your one mile and you come across another soldier wanting you to do another mile, not having the context that you did for the fellow soldier another mile. So it was it was such an exploitative, ambiguous law that could not be tracked on people. But as long as the soldiers got what they wanted for free from people. Now, Christ is coming into the context that instead of you fighting when they do this thing, just go an extra mile. So it's not like Christ could have not said, I mean, this is Christ who said to a woman that was accused of adultery. This was a Christ who looked at things in a balanced scale and said, but uh, where is the man? Where, 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 where is the other party? Like, this is the Christ that said, I don't find you guilty. Uh, just sin no more, okay? This is the Christ that was able to challenge the tit for tat law. So he could have challenged this law and say, soldiers, I propose. But I think in the mindset of Christ, he understood that if this one, uh, the tit for tat one, it's bringing violence. This one is not bringing violence, but it's developing patience and long suffering in you. Instead, just use it for character development in you. The other one of eye for an eye, it was not developing any character. It was just causing more violence. The one that developed character was the patience and the perseverance. OK, so Christ is not saying I've ordained these laws. Christ is saying, let's just find a way where there will be character development around these laws. So you, the, the going an extra mile was not necessarily being ishashalala. It was just not being a koboka. It was Christ took it higher than the evil the person intended it. Like the person slapping you in the face, the intention is evil, you must fight back. The soldier making you go 10 miles instead of one mile, it was just selfishness on the soldier's side, cruelty on the soldier's side. But Christ says, I challenge you to make the best of every situation. If they say go one mile, bro, don't even wait for them. Just do two miles, three miles and give them their luggage after that. Do you remember that scripture that says in the in the book of Galatians, uh, so you must carry each other's burden so the law of Christ can be fulfilled. This is also coming from this context. Because remember, the very the very essence of the gospel is to esteem the is to esteem the other better than you. Isn't it that we're carrying burdens when we're taking care of our brothers and sisters in the Lord? Are we not carrying the soldier's burden for a mile? 
sometimes you don't know how long is the mile. Isn't it that we're carrying each other's burdens when we're praying and interceding for each other? You don't know how long it's going to take for the prayer to be answered. But that one hour, that 30 minutes you put aside daily to carry your sister's burden, to carry your brother's burden. Are you not, are you not now uh, using the abuse from that soldier to your best character development moment? I think that's what Mashakov always believes in that you know when you go through long suffering it is just for your character development the, the beneficiary here is you okay so now it works sometimes you go through the demands that you could have done it this much better okay so how now do you go an extra mile at work take time to Take time to study the processes and see where is the gap in the processes. Where is the opportunity to build a new process or to eradicate an ineffective process? Ineffective routines. Um, bring innovative solutions. You're going an extra mile. You know, I worked as an accountant for for, for long, sometimes accounting is, is very routine. It's so routine, it's so monotonous, especially if the company does not have systems. So you just sometimes are a greater data capturer before you being an analytic. And so sometimes it's so difficult to, 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 to think outside the box. But the, the challenge here coming from Christ is, are you offering innovative solutions of doing it? Uh, are you offering innovative solutions at your work? Sometimes it's not even, the innovative solution doesn't even have to be within your department. It can be in another department. Something that you're seeing, this is not working. This is really not working. Maybe if we did it this way, it could work. I was part of a project where you used to work, where we had to totally eradicate paper trail, and then everything had to be automated and 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 built into a system. It was such a frustrating moment for us who started accounting, practicing. Um, when you're doing a, a, a cash book reconciliation, you print a bank statement and then you, you take a ruler as an efficient accountant, you keep on capturing. Now things are coming from a bank statement straight to the cash book. It was just magic. But there was a process that needed to be built, which was so tiring, but we reaped the fruits. That was innovation, okay? That was innovation. You know, um, when I was teaching last year, I always talk about how the accounting with teacher party YouTube came about. It was when children were not listening to me in class and I figured out I'm teaching a digital generation. So why do I have to make my voice contained within a certain room, within a certain hour, whereas it can be digital and it can be 24 hours, it can be anywhere in the world. That was innovation. So. So going an extra mile, I could have said as a teacher, these kids don't listen to me. I shout, I half, I puff, they don't listen to me. But have you thought of this thing that needs to be done must be done? What is Holy Spirit the most innovative way to do this thing? You see, that is going an extra mile. That is going an extra mile. And going an extra mile always gets rewarded. OK, uh, are you easy to collaborate with? Something I learned in the company I used to work for as an accountant, there was so much emphasis on cross collaboration where teams had to match skills to produce a certain thing. Um, I remember we had an I uh, was it a telethon or an idea thon or something, but this was a rally where uh, staff members had to share ideas on how we can improve processes. And those ideas were presented. I remember, I didn't even know what a podcast was at that time, guys, I didn't know it, don't laugh at me. At that time, I didn't even know what a podcast was. I remember there was this colleague of mine that said, we are so influential in the CSI space as this company. Why don't we have a weekly podcast? where we share insights so that we build a stronger voice and a stronger brand out there. And I'm thinking, mighty Jesus, 
what is a podcast to start with? You know, there were ideas around, what was the other idea that was so innovative? Besides workshops or something? how we can use LinkedIn productively on a, on a weekly basis where we can share insights, how we can attend the conferences where they're talking about CSI, where we can just pitch to be part of the guest speakers. Bro, we were coming out with crazy things. That's going an extra mile. Okay. You know, sometimes, uh, you are challenged at home as a mother, as a, as a father, uh, and, and, and there's such expectation, such expectation. You can imagine there's expectation for shelter, there's expectation for available, availability, school meetings, assisting with homework, braiding hair, cooking dinner, cooking breakfast, uh, washing the car. There's so much expectation from us and our weekends just go before us without us even knowing. Without us even knowing uh, what, without us even knowing what we are going through, okay? And I, I like it. I often see it when it's time for birthday parties, this going an extra mile in family life that, you know, small children, I don't even, I don't know, I don't have an adult child yet, but small children, they expect nice birthday parties, okay? They don't have this sense of, um, they don't have this sense of, uh, we don't have money. They have this sense of they want this big birthday party. And I've watched myself as a parent going an extra mile to ensure that the expectation is met beyond what my daughter hoped for. I remember last year I had a budget of a 2,000 rand uh, for her party. And, and but if you look at the photos of that party, I'm pretty sure you can say it was a budget of 10,000 rand. I had to learn, I had to develop a sewing skill. Uh, no, uh, uh, yeah, like sewing fabric because I had to build my own decor things. I had to build my own decor things. I couldn't afford buying them. So I had to learn to sew them, which was so interesting. I had to save month by month a month to buy resources. I remember we had a pallet bed that my cousin was sleeping on. We had to deconstruct the pallet bed to create um, the pallet tables for my daughter. We didn't even have a cake on that birthday, but in the photos, you'll never notice there was no cake there. I remember we didn't even have prime meat. I had chicken, hard body chicken. I cooked that hard body chicken so soft, nobody tasted that it was hard body chicken. This happened last year and she wanted the party at a swimming pool. Bro, I don't own a swimming pool. I went to a public swimming pool and I was paying uh, 300 and something for the kids who were attending there. But for me, it reflected going, I, 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 I bought a camera, I did her hair, I, I took photo. It was like a wedding. It was like a 21st birthday. And for me, it just reflected uh, the extra mile, going an extra mile. You know that in every aspect of our life, uh, the extra mile for the kingdom citizens, for those who are in Christ is a standard. It is not something that we visit when we feel like. It is actually the standard of Christ. Also, what I was learning, also what I was learning on this is that the evil men will not stop uh, attacking the evil men. However, it's an opportunity to shine and show forth your goodness. Because you going an extra mile is you coming against your natural instinct of retaliation. Remember when Christ says, uh, there the is a saying that says, 
uh, hate, love those who love you, love your friends, and hate your enemies. And it was challenging that law in the same Matthew 5, where he says, unless your righteousness exceeds, um, also in chapter 5, it says, unless your righteousness exceeds that of that of the um, that of the pagans, then you will never enter the kingdom kingdom of God. And when he's talking about loving your enemies, he's saying go an extra mile. Now he's not saying go on a date with your enemies because I used to struggle like, Lord, really? Really? He's not saying go on a date with your enemy. What he is saying there, this person has decided to be hostile towards you, but it doesn't excuse them from the limitations of humanity, which is sometimes they'll go without food, these people. Sometimes they will go without uh, access to opportunities. They'll go without many things. And because you are the righteous one, you are the servant of God, you are bound to be having multiple resources. At the time of the lack of an evil person, don't be like, cho, cho, you deserve it. Because you're still the perpetrator. Are you aware? You're still in the circle of perpetrating. Okay, if you ask me this thing Sunday, I didn't even care. I just wanted to go on and on and on and do and do kung fu but you know what now i believe it now i believe it so when 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 christ is talking about um loving your enemies is saying these people are the ones that have got a problem and these people live in their vicious cycle don't allow their vicious cycle to deem your identity because remember you are the salt and the light the moment you enter into their vicious circle your identity is lost which is what was the intention of the enemy from the onset for you to lose your identity for you to doubt your identity who you are in Christ my calling in Christ is that of is that of sharing is is that of serving is the diaconus calling uh, diaconus calling uh, or diaconus, Greek word for serving, for being a servant. And the other one is being an intercessor. The other one is being uh, the teacher. That's that's the destiny, being, being, being a teacher of the word. So now can you imagine if I'm embroiled in a fight? I'm already now a criminal, not the teacher of the word, not the intercessor. So I wanted to motivate you guys in, in, in going an extra mile at work, family life, church life, community life. You know, there is so much we can do as community members about going an extra mile. Sometimes the, 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 the rubbish is not picked up by those that are supposed to pick it up. We can go an extra mile and keep the streets clean. We can go an extra mile and volunteer free services uh, of our expertise to needy organizations that are providing to the vulnerable that's going an extra mile guys about above and beyond being above and beyond being a teacher and a lecturer i can offer my services free to a person that needs to be mentored in certain subjects that's going an extra mile i hope this makes sense. Father, we thank you for your word. I pray that it heals your children and then it addresses the questions they had about going an extra mile. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Goodbye.